The majestic Wa'inai Coast, long been known as a place of great history and spectacular natural beauty. But dotted within this magnificent landscape, there's a different picture, an indelible image of a place that has long been ignored and neglected, and for the people who call this place home, an unwanted label. Usually when people ask where you're from, and I'm proud to say why not, but when I say why not, usually the thought that comes to their mind is the dirty city, the bad city, the atrocious city, the city with the homeless, the bad people, the chronics. It saddens me that there's not that many role models to look up to that are from Wainai. We need more people that succeed, that go on to do more, that come from our community. For Wainai High School seniors Cassidy Beck and Jacoby Sid, and many others like them who face a daily battle to shed this image, the list of needs is a lengthy one. But what they want is simple. We're not given much opportunities. We're given a name before we, before people actually get to know us. And so like, with us not getting the opportunities to express the talent that we truly have and the big heart that we have, then you know we're not given the chance to go out there and express our talents. As members of Wa'inai School's Sea Rider Productions, Jacoby and Cassidy are helping to lead a nationally acclaimed program, one that has grown from humble beginnings into a world-class facility and a great source of pride for the Wa'anai coastline and beyond. I'm a former Spanish teacher who used the tool of a camera in the classroom to teach, and I saw how very powerful that tool was. And this is a result of um, big dreams. But those dreams almost never happened. When I graduated from Wa'anai High School back in 1973, seriously, I told myself, I'm getting the heck out of here, and I actually used a, uh, a much better word, but I'm getting the heck out of here and I am never ever coming back. So Suisu went to the mainland to attend college, what she believed to be a one-way ticket to opportunity. But every summer she came home and every time she did, she saw things she never noticed growing up here and in the process gained a new appreciation for her home. And I just knew by the fifth year of going back and forth to the mainland, I knew this is where I, I belonged, this is where I was needed, and this is my home, and this is where I wanted to live. But despite the growing numbers of success stories on the Wa'anai coast, the challenges are still many. And what happens on this coastline affects not only the people of the Leeward Coast or the island of Oahu, but the entire state. Each year, tens of millions of dollars flow into this coastline from welfare and unemployment to other forms of government assistance. But there are also signs of hope. And the seeds for change have been planted. We don't have to accept all these negative uh, stereotypes and these negative statistics. We, we can make a difference. The thing that has the most hope is what we see behind us is the, is the children. You know, I don't care if they go into archaeology or history, but if they go on to something they're interested in and enjoy and get more options, and then they can come back into the community here and help the community. A lot of my college students have been from the Wai'anae side, and they come back and work in the community. That's the thing we, we like to see the best, is it sort of comes around. You know? The Pacific Lakes Hawaii Foundation wants to sustain these and similar programs with a simple goal of collaboration between communities and organizations. You know, it doesn't take much as you drive down that coastline to see a positive change that's happening, the investment that is happening in that community. And, you know, one can get excited pretty quickly once you start to really digest all that is occurring and the positive that can happen out there. Too often it's, it's, it's one or the other, you know. Um, it's either you're on a social cause or it's a business cause. And, and, and this is one that it can be mutually beneficial for, for, for all and shame on us if we don't take advantage of that opportunity because that's where you can really sustain yourself over time. I, I think um, investment, a lot of times we throw resources at the problem and we don't quite understand that it's really, it, it really is uh, putting resources at the right place, at the right time, the right plans. 
so that, uh, so that we don't have to keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Because for the people who call this coastline home, it's about nothing more than a level playing field. Just faith and just believe in, believe in everybody in the Wainai community because we, we need that motivation just so that we know we can. We really try hard to succeed because we want to go out there and succeed and proudly say that we're from Wainai. Give us a chance before giving us a name. It's simple as that. <laughs> We're going to make it out here. We are. I mean, there are enough of us that really believe that it's going to happen because there are so many great people out here that believe that. And we are beginning to pull together. It's the right leadership in the place. I think there are the right people that do believe in us that are not from the coast, that really do believe in us, and that are listening, really listening to what, it, what is it that we want, what is our dreams, what are our hopes. Um, and that's what I want. I want really folks to really realize that this is a really special place with really special people.